Hi everyone, uh, my name is Danny and in this video I'll be giving you a brief uh, short-term review of the RGK Tiga Sub 4. So the reason I'm giving this review is that there's actually not a lot of videos out there reviewing wheelchairs in general, and <clears throat> given that often there's such a significant cost outlay, you really need to do your research before uh, buying one of these, because it would be an expensive mistake to get wrong. So I suppose I should start with the caveat that I have only had this for three months or so, but I think in that time I've used it pretty much every day. Um, sometimes you know 12 plus hours a day and uh, I've got a pretty good feel for, for how it is now and what I like and don't like about it so I'll give a brief overview just top to bottom and then go through the pros and cons um, so here we go so starting at the top this is a uh, an accessory that you can choose to add on or not but these push down handles I had them on my Quickie Helium from the NHS, which I'm sitting in right now, and found them to be really useful. Some people don't like them, it's just an aesthetic thing, but personally I find that they're quite helpful if you do need a push. Uh, my partner often comes out with me you know, hiking or in the woods, or if there's a particularly steep gradient, it's just a little bit more helpful than grabbing onto the back of the chair. I also find them quite helpful to um, grab a hold of when I'm leaning down, so I can show you on this one. I can grab that and then lean down and then pull myself back up because I don't have any core function or lower back function, so that movement would be uh, really tricky otherwise. So that's those. The backrest is actually not something that I ordered with the chair, but it's a J3 and I swapped it from my Helium to this chair because this chair came with a standard fabric backrest which was a little bit low and a little bit soft for me. Um, I prefer a hard backrest because again having a relatively high thoracic injury and no core control um, on account of being complete, I find having stability, uh, especially when leaning back, really important. So I swapped to a fixed backrest. The back side of the chair otherwise you've got this kind of curved bar which it's really solid and quite good for when you're lifting it places. Um, coming down, the side guards, the fenders, they're a customizable option. I chose to have carbon fiber side guards. Um, I think you can choose to have ones that fold inwards. I didn't really see the point of that uh, because I had never felt the need to, to do that. So I wanted them to be fixed onto the actual body of the chair. I think they look quite nice and they're, they're tucked in and housed the wheels really nicely as well. Coming down, I suppose I'll skip over the cushion because I didn't really, uh, uh, the cushion didn't come from RGK and everyone's cushion will be different, but they do do cushions for what it's worth. The underside is um, tension adjustable straps, which I haven't had to adjust so far, but I imagine over time I will have to. The seat is a kind of ergonomic um, tapered design, which I think you can see there. So there's a kind of backward slanting bit and then it goes flat, which is to kind of seat your bum so that it kind of hugs you almost. Um, and that ergonomic design is supposed to be a bit more comfortable and um, secure. That's part of why these chairs are kind of made to measure, which I'll go into later. Coming down to the frame, um, this is aluminium, the Tiga sub 4 is aluminium, there is a titanium version, a titanium strength to weight is greater than um, aluminium, but for my first custom chair I chose aluminium because the octane was fairly significantly more expensive so I didn't want to go for that. And tucked in here we've got the scissor brakes, I've used a couple of different brakes on chairs, I find the scissor brakes to be um, best just because they're quite easy to put on and off even if you don't have full hand control 
and they tuck away nicely when they're not in use, unlike some other brakes which you uh, have to kind of knock forwards and get in the way when you transfer. The wheels are Spinergy, I think they're BLXL wheels, 18 spokes. They are fairly lightweight, I've not actually put them on the scales. Um, the tyres are Marathon Plus, uh, Schwalbe Marathon Plus, which actually wasn't what I um, had requested with the chair, but I think they come as standard on so many chairs because they are really good workhorses, and I don't think I've ever had a puncture with one. I say that, I've only been a chair user for a year and a half, but I've taken it on some fairly off-road um, ventures. So they are good tyres, but they weigh about half a kilogram each, which is quite significant when you think of the overall weight of the chair. The push rims are Philips 3R, which are the I think more modern equivalent to the Surge push rims. So they're oval shaped and they have a rubber strip on the top, which I find invaluable for when you're pushing up any kind of gradient just to get some purchase on the chair. And then the sides are um, smooth aluminium, which you can let run through your hands when you are going downhill. But they're great, I haven't had a problem with them. Have been tempted to try out Gecko um, and Curve push rims, but simply due to the cost, I haven't quite bitten the bullet yet. Coming down the casters, which you probably can just about see, are the frog's leg casters, and there are four inch uh, casters. have had no issues with them. They don't wobble when you're picking up speed, which I find um, really great because some chairs do, and it's really off putting. Um, and the center of gravity, now that I'm looking at it, is fixed, and that's um, going to determine when you're measured up. Foot plate here is carbon fiber. You can get a little hole cut in it as well if you want to save that those extra 20 grams, uh, or you like the aesthetic of a hole in the foot plate. And as you can see, there are some kind of customized colors on here. Um, one nice thing is that you can customize certain parts of the chair. So I've gone for a bit of a purple accent on the casters, the caster arms, and the wheels, as well as. Um, bits on the back of the chair. I don't actually know what they're called, but um, yes. And you can see this tag. I, I recently flew with the chair. No issues really. In fact, I often see the guys picking it up and being surprised at how light it is, which comes to the specification, I suppose. So it's called a sub four because without the wheels and the cushion, the frame is supposed to weigh in at less than four kilograms. Now, I think that's true if you don't add any extras. For example, this backrest is not fixed, it folds, um, and that folding mechanism adds weight. These handles likely too add, add weight, and the fact that I've gone for a um, J3 backrest almost certainly adds weight too, just because of the mechanism, and it's the aluminium version rather than the uh, carbon fiber version. So my sub four, it's actually sub five, um, weigh, I did weigh it recently, and it weighs in about 4.9 kilograms, which is still respectable, um, but not quite sub four. But again, yours may be different if you don't choose to have any extras that do add weight. And you can easily take that weight off uh, in another way. And it depends what kind of chair you're coming from, but for me, I was coming from the Quickie Helium, which is a great first chair, don't get me wrong, but um, this weighs probably about 14 or 15 kilograms all built up, whereas this is more in the region of nine or so um, with the wheels and, and cushion. So it is significantly different. And the, what it really comes down to is the lifting weight. So when you're moving a car and lifting the frame without the cushion and the wheels, um, that's the difference you notice. And for me, that, that was really noticeable. This is so easy to get in the car. I can do it with one arm, no problem. I can do this with one arm as well, but it's noticeably heavier, and if you're doing it three, four times a day, it does, um, you know, especially after the end of a long day, um, you do notice it. So, that's more or less all of the features about it. Um, there are probably a couple of things I've forgotten. Oh, I, I suppose I should say you can adjust the height of the footrest up and down. I don't think you can adjust the angle. Um, so some people like to have it slightly slanted backwards to stop their feet falling off. And there's a 
that little Velcro leg strap to hold your, your legs in place. So pros and cons, I suppose the first thing to mention is that this, this is a made to measure chair. So I think that's a huge pro, obviously. Uh, having a chair measured to you is so much better for pushing efficiency, ergonomics, comfort, um, and it is day and night, you know, from, from an NHS chair to this. These chairs are also measured to us, but there are far fewer measurements taken and it's far less customizable. And I noticed um, a huge difference going from my Quickie to an RGK Tegas up for just in terms of pushing around the turning circle, it's more agile, I feel more comfortable in it, and I'm less sore at the end of the day. Um, and getting into the car, as I mentioned, is, uh, is much, much easier than it was before. So an advisor from RGK usually comes up and measures you for it. Um, and in my case, um, the advisor was a chair user himself, which you know gave me a lot of confidence that he actually knew what he was doing and talking about because there are certain things that you can only really understand and relate to if you experience them. Um, and one of those is actually being a chair user. So I think he appreciated the sort of things um, that I was looking for and that were important to me. So thanks, Sean. Um, so another pro, I suppose, is, is that it is so lightweight. Apologies for noise there. But there is a, probably a trade-off in terms of lightweight and durability. I could have made this chair a lot lighter. Um, I could have had it made out of titanium or got a different chair made out of carbon fiber. Um, but to me, durability and longevity is also important. And there's probably a point at which the balance is tipped too far one way. So as long as I can lift it into the car with ease and it doesn't feel too heavy to push around, that I'm happy, you know. Um, I think around nine kilograms all built up at the moment feels about right for me. Um, I may change my mind in future, but it's a lot lighter than this chair. And it's also made out of aluminium, so it's just uh, engineering and the de design that goes into it, I suppose, that, that makes it that bit more lightweight. The other pro I'd say about it is that it is customizable in that you can add little accents. Um, Though the, the drawback there, I suppose, is that it's, there are limited color options, so that you can have brushed or polished type, uh, polished frame, but you can't actually change the color of the tubing, which some people might like to do. There's one more thing I forgot to mention on the actual frame, which is these little attachments here for the front wheel. So the front wheel is RGK's kind of version of the free wheel. Um, it's effectively a third wheel or a fifth wheel. It goes out front, but rather than attaching to the foot plate as the um, free wheel does, it attaches to the frame, thereby eliminating any kind of flex or bend that I experienced um, in the foot plate when you're going over rough terrain. I'll do a separate video maybe on the front wheel. Uh, I think it's a great piece of kit, but that's another thing that probably added a little bit of weight uh, when considering the overall weight of the chair. So. Those are the pros of the chair. I'm mostly really happy with it. You know, it's, it's agile, it's light, it's comfortable, um, and it's pretty much all that I want at the moment in a chair. In terms of cons, um, I suppose cost has to be the main one, but with any custom-made chair, that's, um, that's the inevitability you, you have to face. You know, unfortunately, with all disability equipment, the cost is... Uh, very significant. In my case, I was quite fortunate that I had um, been able to make use of the Access to Work scheme. So for those that aren't familiar, the Access to Work is a government-led subsidization whereby you apply to the DWP, Department for Work and Pensions. Um, and it doesn't have to be for a wheelchair, it can be for any kind of um, disability aids. So that could be software, you know, voice to text, um, that could be a certain type of laptop, or it could be something that makes the workplace more accessible. For me, it was a lightweight chair, and I made the argument that um, it makes sense having a work and home chair for me because I work in a hospital, so infection control is a priority. Uh, a lightweight chair was a necessity because working 
long hours and shift work, it's quite easy to get fatigued when you're using your arms and shoulders for literally everything. And having something that's made to measure is safer for both me and patients because it allows me to be more secure when I'm doing procedures, um, even simple things like taking blood. So they accepted that, which is good. And the DWP pays 80% and your employer pays 20%. Um, that if you use the chair um, in, you know, as a leisure pursuit as well in your own time, then you can contribute um, or you should contribute a certain amount as well. There are other funding options um, because obviously you have to be employed to make use of access to work, but that's how I funded this. Um, and I think the quote in the end was about five thousand four hundred and five thousand five hundred pounds, um, which I think the first time you hear it is a shockingly high number for a wheelchair. But when you consider what goes into these and what it is, it kind of starts to make sense. But even so. It's, it's a huge amount of money, um, so you don't want to get it wrong. And I suppose that's another con um, in that it is custom made, so if you change or your needs change, then it's difficult to modify something that's you know, made for a previous version of you. Um, one other pro I suppose I forgot to mention is that there is a warranty that comes in with this. I think it's 12 months for parts um, and five years for the, the frame and fixtures if there's any manufacturing defect um, then they'll replace a repair free of charge but you can't get anything done through the wheelchair services because it's a private chair so i think that concludes most of my thoughts about the chair it's generally pretty good chair i would say and there's not too much i'd change about it at the moment um, I would highly recommend doing, doing your research beforehand and thinking about what really matters to you if you're thinking about getting a new chair, because all of our needs will be different. And speaking to one of the advisors at RGK or wherever you choose to go about um, what you need and what you want. But thanks for watching. Any questions, pop them down below and I'll do my best to answer. Uh, and until then, see you in the next one.